Hello and welcome guys. Today we are going to learn how to configure Kubernetes cluster in Windows system with Minikube. So Minikube is one method that you can use and you can install your Kubernetes cluster. The few steps I mentioned in this notepad, I am going to follow these steps to set up my Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so the first thing as you can see it is all in one installation, all your component Kubernetes component would going to install in one node and it is going to be helpful for you when you do not have much resource in your desktop or laptop you'd be able to set up your Kubernetes cluster with that because it doesn't require much resource okay so what I'm going to do the first thing I'm going to download the installer because there are a few more we packages we'll have to download so let's go ahead and download the first one this is basically going and downloading from the github the link I will already uh, I would going to give you in the description area you would be able to download it or you can also go to github in this location and you can see minikube installer.exe from here you can download it for me it's already downloaded and I have keeping this file in E drive right and let's go the next step which is basically of uh, the hypervisor required to run your minikube VM so either one of them VirtualBox or VMware workstation you would be able to use either one of them I already downloaded and also installed in my system if I run VirtualBox here you can see I already installed right and there are also already few VMs I'm running okay so let's go with the next step which is kubectl.exe that you can download it from uh, if I just go to Google and run download kubectl for Windows there are two links here you can click on the first one and if I scroll it down you can see it has given a link here with curl you would be able to download okay anyway I'm going to show you how to download this later for now what I'm going to do I'll bring up this git bash okay so this is nothing but a terminal which is going to allow me to run some Linux command as well so you can also use the cmd default command prompt but it doesn't provide much uh, feature that is why I have downloaded this git bash and install in my system you you can also be able to download it from internet let's run git bash for windows and the first link you can see here you can select which operating system you are using Linux, Windows and based on that you can download it if you are using 64 bit use 64 bit otherwise 32 bit if you are using 32 bit of operating system so it is already in downloaded so I don't need to download let's cancel the download here okay so let's clear the screen and let's go to the next step that we have set virtual driver okay so let's we are going to follow that step but before that I need to install the installer which I already downloaded and kept in drive E right so let's double click on this and install that installer yes okay next and you can specify which location you would like to install this package so I'm going to install in D drive I scroll it down to the D D drive and I'm going to install it on Minikube. I already created one folder in there in D drive and in that folder I'm going to install. Next finish. Done. So 
the next step is to install the git bash which I have showed you I already downloaded and also installed I don't think it is required to show you because it is pretty simple just say next and use the default option what it is going to ask you just say next 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 for everything so it is already installed but uh, looks like even though I'm trying to reinstall it it is trying to install it again let's wait anyway installation is done I don't want the release not uh, let me launch the git bash git bash so this is how your git bash is going to be look like let's increase the font size okay so and I install my component in D drive mini cube let's switch to that directory and you can see I can run ls command right like the Linux okay so what is next let's go to the document here download virtual works already done and install kubectl we are going to download it later we already ran the installer and install in d drive git bash we already launched it and now we need to set a virtual driver because the vm which is going to run minikube will have to set a driver whether you are using virtualbox or workstation or any other hypervisor you have to set the driver so how we are going to set it if you search in google set driver for minikube virtualbox click on virtualbox minikube there is a link and this is how we'll have to set it let's go to git bash and run this command it did not copy let go let's copy again enter so it looks like it is set now go and follow the next step which is basically to start my mini cube and you would notice there would be few things going to happen once I run this command and you can see it is basically now trying to create a virtual machine and if I bring this virtual box you can see there are already few VMs running on it and there is nothing about the mini cube and now you can see there is something came up for mini cube and it is also trying to run it because as you can see here creating virtual box with these two CPU 4 GB of RAM and I think about two, uh, 20 gigs of this size it is creating a VM so it is going to take some time probably like two or three minutes let's pause the video for now and I'll resume once it is completed okay so the mini cube already launched and it is up and running you can see there's few things happen it also downloaded the Kubernetes and Docker images and deployed it. And there are default add-ons. It has enabled. I would going to tell you and show you what the uh, add-ons are and how you're going to use them. And it says kubectl not found in the path, so it is asking me to download it. So let's go ahead on this link and open that link here if I scroll it down I already showed this screen I guess if not let's let's go ahead anyway so I'm installing this on Windows machine so let's scroll it down a little to Windows section and here is the Windows section and the curl is already available in git bash so let's run this command and download kubectl.exe
we'll have to wait until this download complete it's a little slow let's wait anyway I'll pause, pause the video because I'm not sure how much time it is going to take okay it's already downloaded I was supposed to pause the video okay cool so let's do an ls on it and you can see there is uh, kubectl.exe and if I run kubectl I can run kubectl command excellent so let's run kubectl get not command the first thing I'm going to try and you can see it is ready and it is running let's run all wide just to see a few more information about my not docker kernel version ip and other information let's do kubectl get pod all namespaces and you can see there are a few pods up and running cool so let's let's do some additional stuff now we want to deploy an application that is uh, default application it gives by the minikube site and I'm going to deploy that just to check whether everything working fine or not and once that is done I'm also going to enable dashboard and we'll go through the component with graphical interface okay so the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy echo server application just run kubectl create deployment hello mini cubes the name and image is this one echo server let's run this command and now if I do kubectl get pod it is trying to create because it is going to download it first and then it is going to create so let's wait anyway let's do a kubectl logs let's copy this from here instead of typing it isn't started that is why it had thrown an error we can do describe as well but anyway let's wait until this pod come up okay so this pod is now come up and up and running and also you can see kubectl get sbc or service let's do minus a to see all the service okay there isn't any service running for hello minikube so let's go ahead and do the next thing okay so it created one deployment file if I do kubectl get deployment can see there is a deployment file you can edit that deployment file if you would like to like this one it would going to open in notepad hello mini cube and if you want to change anything in this file you can change it for instance port not port or something you'd be able to do so currently there is no not port set that is what I'm going to do here. Let's just cancel this and run this command. I'm going to expose uh, port 4040 for this port first. And now, if I do SBC, you can see there is one more created under default and the not pod which is 31677 the external one and with that we would be able to access this 
application test application so how do we able to see it let's run minikube service list command here you can see the link there is one more command you would be able to run it you would be able to run basically these are minikube command you can run this command as well let's copy this paste it here open your browser and paste it and you can see uh, it is giving the information right so this is how you'd be able to deploy your application and I think currently it is running under default project if I do OC get pod minus minus all namespaces and it is currently running under default namespace okay so next thing what I was supposed to show you is the dashboard and how you're going to enable it so let's run minikube add-ons list and you can see there are a bunch of add-ons you can use so I'm going to use the dashboard which is currently disabled state right now let's enable it add and enable dashboard enter so it is enabled let's just double check whether it is enabled and it is enabled so how to launch it just run minikube dashboard And you can see there is one dashboard it is popping up in my default browser and there isn't any prompt here so let's run this in background with n person so that you know if I even do a control C here I still be able to use my dashboard okay so this is how the dashboard looks like currently it is looking into the namespace default let's change it to all and you can see all the pods are running under all namespaces you can walk through all of them if you would like to you can check cluster role namespace node details and you can see there is only one node which is my minikube node if I click on that you would going to see some information about the node and there's some statistics about the utilization for my node minikube the CPU memory pod and all that information if I scroll it down excellent so this is how you'd be able to configure your minikube cluster if you do not have much resource in your depths desktop or laptop <laughs>